Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Now yesterday I got away with my shortest video for quite a while. It was a, a video about Sam Kappelman Line's Kakuru puzzle. It's a wonderful puzzle and we dubbed the video the hardest easy puzzle ever and it led to a sub 20 minute um, video which is well as you'll know if you've been watching the channel for any length of time um, quite a short video for me at least uh, well today I suspect the Sudoku gods are going to wreak their revenge um, the testers are saying two things about the puzzle on the screen uh, the first thing is that it's exceptionally hard uh, the second is that it's one of the greatest puzzles of all time. Um, it's called Wheel of Arrows and it's by Aspartagus. Um, now I've also been told by Totally Normal Cat who is one of the great uh, setters and solvers on the world scene at the moment that this is something of a miracle puzzle. So I'm very much looking forward to giving it a go. Uh, before I do that, um, the, the main, I've got two, well, two things to mention. The first is of course Marge's will or I suppose Marge's grandfather's will in which she has been left this Sudoku. Now many many of you are already uh, have already tried this and have spotted a way to turn this puzzle into a video from Marge's grandfather. If you've not had a go, do have a go. It leads to a wild puzzle puzzle hunt type trail. It really is sensational. Um, there's a lot of help if you're stuck over on the Discord server at the moment. And if you just want to get this puzzle and have a look at it, then do go to our Twitter, which is at Cryptic Cracking, and you will find it there. Good luck. Um, the other thing to mention is that today on Patreon, we have released Mark's most recent solve of the Times Club Monthly uh, special, that brutal cryptic crossword. Um, oh, by the way, I think Mark is planning to have a go at the American Crossword Puzzle Tournament tomorrow, which is online for the first time ever. Um, so if you're competing in that, good luck. Um, right, and with all that said, let's get to the rules of a Spartacus's puzzle. What's going on? We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. The digits on an arrow sum up to the digit in the circle of that arrow. Uh, so what that means is, look at those squares. If those squares are one, oops, ah, what am I doing? One, three, and five. One, three, and five sum together, add to nine. You'd have to put nine into the circle. Uh, so that's how arrow clues work. And then clues outside the grid indicate the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal and digits can repeat along such a diagonal so what that's telling us is this 53 here is summing up the entirety of this diagonal this 26 is summing up those six cells along this diagonal and what you are perfectly entitled to do is to repeat digits along the diagonal. What you can't do obviously is repeat digits in a in a three by three box. That would break the rules of Sudoku, which you mustn't do. Do have a go at this. It's meant to be hard, as I say, but also an absolutely marvelous puzzle. Uh, the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play, let's get cracking. Um, now the first thing I've seen, so I will note it, is that there must be a one on that three cell eight diagonal because eight in three cells, if you can't repeat a digit and you can't within a three by three box of a Sudoku, must be one, two, five or one, three, four. Um, okay, well the next thing I'm seeing, which I guess is the point of the title of the puzzle, the wheel of arrows, is this sort of Catherine wheel of uh, three cell arrows. Now a three cell arrow must sum, well a three cell arrow where you can't repeat a digit on the arrow must sum to at least six because the minimum we could put on this arrow would be one, two and three. Um, so this square here is going to have to be at least equal to six. I've just realized why I'm having to press spacebar more than usual. Look, let me just show you something here. Our programmer Sven has been working on something very, very cool. What is this you may be asking? Yep. Yep, we soon should be able to draw lines and indeed X's, O's, all sorts of things. Isn't that, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Anyway, I thought I'd just show you that. Um, now, what have we got? We've got six, sevens, eights, and nines into those squares. We've got, ah, ah, aha. I have spotted something very interesting. So each of these circles has a one cell arrow coming off it into the middle box. Now that in and of itself allows us to obviously put 
six, sevens, eights, and nines into these four cells. But it also means that each of these arrows, each of the Catherine wheel arrows, has to be a different digit, because obviously these digits can't be the same. Now, what does that mean? Um, uh, hang on a second. So it means, let me just think about this slowly. So one of these arrows is a six. That's got to be one, two, and three. One of them will be a seven. That's one, two, and four. One of them will be an eight, which will either, oh, where's my one gone there? Oh, it really has disappeared. Oh. Um, one of them will be an eight, which will be one, three, four, or one, two, five. And one of them will be a nine, which has lots of options. Um, okay, so that must mean something. I feel sure that that's, I mean, that feels too important, the fact these can't be the same number. So is that meant to do something with these diagonals? How it's a nine cell diagonal summing to 53. So um, it's averaging very close to five, isn't it? Um, so, well, it's near a six, but it's certainly not an unusual average. Same must be true of this one. It's averaging just very slightly over six, um, but only very slightly. And it's already got some relatively high digits on its diagonal. Th 31, 31 in six cells is av averaging close to five. And 26 in six cells is averaging well, yeah, it's not, it's averaging just over four, but it's not interesting. Right, so it must be something to do with these. I'm wondering if, is there a way of ruling out the fact, that, can you not have a one on all four arrows for some reason? Because three of them must have a one on them. Oh, ah. Three of them must have a one on them because we know that eight, whichever one of these is eight, must have a one on its arrow. So this square can't be a one because if that's a one, it rules one out of all of those six cells. And then there would only be two three cell strings that could contain a one. Whereas we know that the arrow with six on it, seven on it and eight on it must have a one. So this square is not a one. So one is shifted into the edge cells of the eight diagonal. Uh, okay, that doesn't seem to have done anything, does it? There is a version of Fistimafel that uses these, these strings rather than this ring here, but I have no clue which other cells it uses. I'm just I'm going to have to check that just in case it matters, which means I will have to just work out what the Fistimafel looks like if it includes um, these three cell arrows. Um, I don't remember how to do this. Let me just have a stare at this something for a second. If I think it's going to be interesting, I will explain what I'm doing here. If I don't, then imagine you've never seen this part of the video. So those squares are going to be four sets of the digits one to nine if I double count the centers so hang on a moment I'm just going to just 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 bear with me just bear with me I'm not probably going to use this but I'm going to check it um, so I'm gonna to have to get rid of those 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 are going to become singles like this and those are going to become 16 cells that have to be the equivalent um, so what i'm alleging is that the purple cells and the green cells have to be the same 16 digits and Yeah, well, that's definitely going to be worth thinking about. In fact, that's definitely going to be worth thinking about because where on earth are you going to put these high digits? 
especially the 7s, 8s and 9s along this we know that there's a 7, 8 and 9 in this foursome and we can't ever put them on the arrows. This, yeah, okay, all right, apologies. So what we need to do, I need to explain what on earth I was doing there. So I will try and do that like this. Um, Fistmafel found a theory that related certain cells in the grids to certain other cells and I'm going to try and use that now using set theory to invent a relationship between these cells, which are the arrow cells in boxes two, four, six, and eight, and certain other cells of the grid. So to do that, I've highlighted the whole of row two, the whole of row eight, the whole of column two, and the whole of column eight. Um, and I'm going to say that if I, in fact, maybe I can just do this by adding those squares. If I, how could I define these purple and red cells in the grid. Well, I could say that the, they were four sets of the digits one to nine if I double count the, the cells that have like a, a red flag in them. Because obviously this complete column is a set of the digits one to nine. This complete column is a set of the digits one to nine. This complete row is a set of the digits one to nine and this set complete row is a set of the digits one to nine. So if I add up all of those four sets of the digits one to nine, I'm going to double count those squares because they're in both sets and single count the purples. So this is a representation of four sets of the digits one to nine. Now, this is where it gets tricky. What I want to do is I want to look at just one of those four sets of the digits one to nine. And from that set, I want to remove those five digits. Now if I remove those five digits from that set of the digits one to nine, what digits will I be left with in that set? Well clearly I'll be left with these four squares because we know that this box is one set of the digits one to nine, so if I was to remove those five digits from the set of the digits one to nine, I would be left with those. So now I need to deduct out of that one set each of these squares. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna remove purple from each of these squares. Now for this square, remember, this square was double counted. So I'm just gonna remove, so it's going to become now purple because it was double counted and I'm only removing one, this square one time. It's just going to revert to being purple. All those squares are going to become nothing. These squares are going to become green and this square is going to become purple. So now what I've done is I'm now saying that the cells that I've got highlighted in the grid are three complete sets of the digits one to nine, if I double count these squares, plus four, the purple squares will include four digits, which are these four digits. And now I'm going to do that again. I'm going to do it on this box now. Now remember, originally we had four sets of the digits one to nine in the purple, and including the reds counting twice. So from the second set of the digits one to nine, which I haven't touched yet, I'm going to remove those four squares. And in that set of the digits one to nine, I will be left with those digits there. So we can now turn all these into this relationship. And I'm going to keep doing this. I've still got two sets of the digits one to nine in the, from those original four sets of the digits one to nine that I haven't touched yet. So I'm going to remove those five squares from that set. And that will mean I'm left with those digits. And then from the final set of the digits one to nine, the one I haven't adulterated at all yet, I can remove those squares and be left with these squares. And now from that original those original four sets of the digits one to nine, I have taken, if you like, or I've adjusted each of those four sets once. And I've, I've arrived at this position where we can say that the green squares, and you can see there are 16 green squares, must be exactly identical to the purple squares that are left. And if you count the purple squares, we should find, and indeed we do find that there are 16 of them. Now, why do I think this matters for this puzzle? Well, let's go back and remember what these digits are here, which is the same as these digits, I suppose. 
they are a 6, a 7, an 8, and a 9. Now, a 6, a 7, 8, and a 9 have to appear in the purple square somewhere. Well, the 6 is hard enough, but where on earth are the 7, 8, and 9 going? Where can I put 7, 8, and 9 in the purple? In fact, in fact I've just realised I can't actually put it here at all. This square can't be a 7, 8, or 9 because it's on an 8 diagonal. So where does the 7, 8, and 9 go? Well, let's just think this through logically. Could I put a 7, 8, or a 9 on an arrow? No way, because even if this arrow was a 9, the only way a 7 could go on it would be with double 1. So this will not work. So there's no way you can put the 7s, 8s, and 9s in any of those squares. You can't put it here because of the 8 diagonal. And there's only three purples left, which have to be the digits 7, 8, and 9. That is already absolutely beautiful. Um, now, the next digit I'm interested in is whichever one of these is a 6. Because I need to put the 6 somewhere. And I can't put the 6 in a purple square on the 8 diagonal either. Because I can't make the 8 diagonal double one six. So the 6 has to be on an arrow, which means it has to be on the 9 arrow, because you can't make 8. We've just said we can't make 8 with 3 cells, including a 6. So now, the 9 arrow, wherever, whichever one of these is 9, it, the 9 arrow is a 1, a 2, and a 6. Ah! Ah, so I've answered one of my earlier questions, which is, can you... I, do, I wasn't sure you could put four ones round the ring, but in fact there are four ones round the ring. Because now we know that the nine arrow, whichever one of these is the nine arrow, is a one, two, six arrow. The eight arrow must have a one, the seven arrow must have a one, and the six arrow must have a one. So there is a, there is a whole caboodle of ones going round the grid. Um... Now, what does that mean? Uh, that's the question we've got now. We have got... I know there are four ones. Right, so if there are four ones in the purple, there must be four ones in the greens. And the greens are only in four different boxes of the Sudoku. So each one of these boxes that contains greens must have a one in it so there's a one in one of those three squares for sure there's a one in one of these three squares and there's a one in one of those three squares so if that's a one you're going to get a one here a one here and a one here and if that's a one you're going to have a one here here and here Oh, right, so you can never put one in the corner. That's what we can see. Because there's a one in one of those two positions in box one, if you try and put a one here, I, that, that seems to break because it didn't seem to be the case you could ever have a one here depending on what the options were. So that would cause one... Yes, I see, you get a repeated one in the row. Right, so this square, this square, and this square are not ones. And we get a pretty little wheel of ones look going round the Catherine Wheel of Ones. Uh, okay, I'm not actually sure that does anything at all, though. So, what do we do now? We don't seem to have learnt very much at all about the 53 and the 55 diagonal. 15 di uh, the 15 diagonal now has a 1 on it. Right, so two, hang on, hang on, hang on, I'm getting confused now. We've got, so I've got a one on the 15 diagonal. So two squares on the 15 diagonal have to add up to 14. And one of those squares is, ah, one of those squares is a seven, eight or a nine. So this can't be seven anymore. So this is, these two squares are either one or they're five or six. 
sick. Oh, this is beautiful. Right, okay. I see. Wow. Wow. I was about to say the six here in the green. In fact, I was about to say absolute nonsense. I was about to equate it to whichever one of these was going to be the six, but they are also green. So if, if there is a six here in one of these two greens, then there would be two sixes in the greens because we know one of these four squares is a green is a is a is a green six. Now, if there are two sixes, where do we put two sixes in the purple? The answer is it's impossible to put two sixes in the purple. You can't put a six here because it's on the eight diagonal, and you can't put more than one six on the Catherine wheel because only one of the Catherine wheel arrows adds up to nine. So they, you can't put a six here, that's impossible. And that's going to give us a digit of all things. This square has to be a nine. And that means that those two are not nine. That's not nine, so that's not nine. And we have a little bit of a start, look. So, <laughs> what does it mean? It means that we've got... I don't actually know what it means. This, These seven and eights are different. So although they don't see each other, because there's no diagonal line here, we have to, we have to bear in mind they add up to 15 because this was a seven, eight, nine triple in these three squares. So this diagonal now has quite a lot of high numbers on it. Those two squares have to be even. That's what we can say, because seven and eight is odd. Those are two, those two digits, whatever they are, are the same. Those two digits are are the same so that those two add to even those two add up to even they add up to odd the overall total is odd so those two have to add up to an even number that's not very useful is it um six let me just double check this so if you've got double six here and double seven there you'd have 26 Oh no, that's loads of degrees of freedom. Sorry, okay, I was just seeing whether or not I could limit the value of those two squares using the 53, but you can't. Um, gosh, so I got this 9, but it doesn't actually seem to have done anything at all. It's, it's telling me there's a 5 now in the greens, but I don't think that's a surprise, is it? There's... No, there's, it's telling me there's a five in the greens, which means there's a five in the purples. And if there's a five in the purples, um, if there's a five in the purples, it could be in two places. It can be on the eight arrow, but we don't know where the eight arrow goes because the eight arrow could be one, two, five, or it could be here. It could be on this eight arrow, but this is a different sort of eight arrow. Um, okay. So is, is it obvious to people <laughs> what that's telling us? It's not obvious to me. I've got a horrible feeling I'm going to have to work out exactly what the composition of the digits is on each of these, you know, because I can probably get a quite a good count now of the number of twos, threes, fours, fives and sixes that appear on these arrows. And that will tell me what the count is of the greens. Um, so at the moment, I know I've got a six, which is one, two, three. 
I know I've got a 7, which is 1, 2, 4. And I know I've got a 9, which is 1, 2, 6. And the 8 is either 1, 3, 4 or 1, 2, 5. And if the 8 was 1, 2, 5, this 5 would correspond with 1, 2, 5. Um, this square... This square can't be 1, but it has to be 2, 3, 4, or 5. But we know, ah, do we know we've got three 2s on, the, on these arrows? Yes, we do. Uh, here's something. We know that the Catherine wheel has a 6. One of them is adding up to 6. That needs a 2. One of them is adding up to 7. That needs a 2. One of them is adding up to... 9 and we know that one is 1 2 6 so there are three twos so that can't be a 2 because it will eliminate two from too many three cell arrows there you go there's a little deduction um i'm just wondering if it's possible to put four twos because if if the eight arrow is one two five then all of these need to have twos on them. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. That is absolutely beautiful. Right, right, that does not work. That does not work because, at least I don't think it works. I didn't fully understand why the ones couldn't go in the corner when I was playing around with here. But I can see if there are four twos on the greens, that square has to be a two because there's only four boxes that can contain greens. So if that's a two, you're going to get two. Yes, that's ab it, does, it does work. You can't put four twos in the greens because you can't do it. It just doesn't work. This would have to be a two in box nine. This would have to be a two in box seven. This would have to be a two in box one. And now you have a big problem in box three because you can't put a green two in. So you can't have four green twos. And if you can't have four green twos, your eight arrow in the purples is one, three, four. And, and that means, this is ridiculous, it's ridiculously clever. That means you have to find a home for the green five in purple. And it, and it cannot be on any of the purple arrows because the purple arrows are one, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, and one, two, six. So that square is a five. And that means we are off again. We get a one, two pair here. Um, okay. <laughs> this is crazy. Now we can... Well, now I know... Now I know exactly what the composition is. Yes, I do. Now I know the exact composition of the purples. I don't know where they go, but I do know the composition of those arrows. Which means I know the composition of the green arrows. Oh, this is really confusing. Um, So, hang on a minute. I'm getting really confused. I apologize. My brain is starting to fry here. We've got, I know what the purple arrows are. Therefore, I ought to know what the green arrows are. I know there's a six on one purple arrow, but that, that's definitely the six that goes into one of those squares. The seven, eight, nine go into these squares as well. The five is mirrored here, so everything else is twos, threes, and fours. So doesn't that mean that square has to be a three or a four, I think? I 
and all of the rest of the greens I think have to be twos threes and fours so that might that might be wrong that's what my gut is telling me um, oh no hang on hang on a minute now I know I'm wondering now if I can use the 55 and the 53 because I actually don't need to know if I sum both of them together if I do both of these at the same time I don't need to know the ordering of the six seven eight and nine because they're just going to be included in both sums this is this is a good thought this is a good thought let me have a think about this um so those cells together add up to 108 but that's double counting this one let's make that red so so the the, the x cross in the middle adds up to 108 if i double count the middle cell now i think i can get quite a good count and at least part of this because the x must include those four squares together we know these four squares are different and therefore they add up to 30. they mirror into those squares so that's another 30 so now i'm at 60. these go let's go one stage out again we can see that this is a five seven eight nine quadruple so that adds up to 29 so now i'm at 89 and i've got left these four squares and the central square twice so i've got 89 and i've got to get to 108 so i need 19 more i think so i need 19 more so these these four squares in the corner um the ones with the blue flash plus two two reds are equal to 19. Uh, this i think this is just madness looking at this actually this is going to drive me crazy um that whatever that is in fact that has to be look that has to be one two three four and five because it's c six seven eight and nine now whatever that is double counts so can we rule out five from there for example if that's five that would give double counted would give us ten so the four corner squares would have to add up to nine using this is the bit i'm not very sure about what are the digits that i've got left to play with here gonna have to do this again sorry so i've got six i've got a one two three arrow a one two four arrow a one three four arrow and a one two six arrow so i've got four ones and we know that the four ones go in the weird catherine wheel sort of outside the original catherine wheel i've got three twos I've got two threes. I've got three two. I've got th four ones, three twos, two threes, two fours. I've got no fives. I can't use any more fives. The five here is matching this five, and that's the only fives we use. And I've got I've got a six, but the six is on an arrow. And mirrors here right so I do I was right I only have two threes and fours to put into these squares which is something I wasn't sure about before but I think it is true um, but that doesn't help me with whether or not I can get to nine because I think I can can't I um, uh, no maybe I can't I'd have to go double two no, I can't actually. I'd have to go, I'd have to use three twos to do it, and I can't put three twos in the blue flash, flashing squares because that won't work for many reasons. Not least that it would obviate the ability to put a two into one of those two squares where there must be a two. So that square is not five. Uh, 
Ah, ah, ha, 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 right. I have now understood something that I hadn't understood before. This square counts double. We've got to get 19. But this square is definitely, it doesn't matter if it's odd or even. I count it double, so it's even. So there must be these four squares are adding up to an odd number. But the only numbers I can choose these four squares to be are twos, threes, and fours. Therefore, I must have one three in these four squares because I need an odd number. I can't use both my threes because that will that will make it impossible to make these squares add up to an odd number. So there is one three. There's one three in the blues. I'm not actually sure this is doing anything. One three. And then the other three squares are selected from twos and fours. And so if I go one, three, two twos and a four, that would be possible. One, three, two twos and a four. I've been going mad here. Um, that's 11, isn't it? So I'd have 11 and then I'd need double four in the middle. And the other possibility is that you have three, two fours and a two, which is 13, which would put double three in the middle. Ah, so this square, this square is a one or a two. So it's not, I mean, it's not a one or a two, it's a three or a four. It's either double three or double four. Now, Oh, no, 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 no. Hang on. Let's not do maths. Let's not do maths for a moment. Let's do Sudoku. Let's do a Sudoku. How can you put two twos in these squares? That is a good question because you can't do it. Where are you going to put them? Um, if you're going to put two twos in the corner squares of a Sudoku or two of any digit in the corner squares of a Sudoku, they always have to be in opposite corners. Because, for example, if you try and put them both in column nine, you will have a problem with the basic rules of Sudoku. So that cannot be a two because there's already a two in one of those squares. So the twos would have to go into those two positions, which rules the two out of the eight diagonal where we know there's a two. So that does not work, um, which means it must be a repeated four. We don't know where that goes, do we? Oh, I'm getting confused now again. So now, now, now the corners are a three, two fours, and a two. which means they add up to 13, which means that central square has to be a three, because double three, i.e. six plus 13 is 19, which is what I needed. Now, now, what does that mean? How do I work out which way round these fours go? There's a, there's a double four pair Oh, so I can, yes, hang on, let's check this. So if this was double four in those two squares, oh, the problem is I don't, I don't know what these are. Let's do a, we'll do a quick check on parity. If this was double four, those, those are obviously adding to an even. Those are adding to an even. Those are adding to an even because they're the same. Then we've got, I've got to get to an odd overall. So we, yeah, we're adding three odd digits. That would work. Okay, let's track, check that one. Um, if these are both even, those are even, those are even. Oh, this is gorgeous. This doesn't work. Oh, thank goodness. Now, now you're adding those three digits up and you need an odd total. But seven plus eight is, these are different. That's 15 plus three is 18. That's an even number. So the parity of this diagonal is wrong if you put the double four in those squares. So the double four goes here. I 
think which means these two squares are now a two three pair they are different like the seven and the eight these these two have to be different digits um i feel like i'm on a sort of quest here trying to solve this this is quite incredible um now what on earth does that mean <laughs> that means that ah now i can get a count on this diagonal can i yes let's look at this so now i've got 13 16 25 these have to add up to 30 right okay and and because we're doubling whatever whatever goes into those two squares is you know if this is x that's 2x if that's y that's 2y so we've got 2x plus 2y equals 30 so x plus y equal 15 so those two squares add up to 15 that can't be a 9 so that can't be a 6 is what i'm getting from that um Yeah, and hang on, if those two add up to 15, then those two must add up to 15, because all four of them together add up to 30. Good Lord. Okay, so we're now we've now learned some stuff about the sort of spokes of the wheel. Um, okay, we... Uh, maybe maybe this diagonal now I've not looked at this one for ages no that's got absolute look at that one that is absolutely hideous we know nothing about that one and this one we've done that one we've done that one we've basically done this one and that one's just the opposite of this one yeah we let me just double check the maths on this we've got 5 plus 15 is 20, yeah, 23. So we need 30 in those squares. So that is what we were expecting. So that does confirm that we're looking for 15 here. So, so far, I think the puzzle, the logic we've done seems to be holding up in terms of its consistency, but I'm not actually sure what we do next. We know, ah, ah. Aha, two fours. Didn't I only have two fours to play with in the, in the um, in the purples? The purples were one two three, one two four, one three four, and one two six. So I've used up both fours. So everything else is a, everything else is a two or a three if it's not a one. Ah. Now, that's interesting. So those squares are 1, 2, and 3. Those squares are 1, 2, and 3. 3 is in one of those two squares, not here. Got 1, 2, 3 triples going around the place now. There's no th 1, 2, there's a 3 in one of these two squares. There's no 3 here. I've got a 1-2 pair in row 3 now. Um, good grief, I've got no clue what to look at now. <laughs> um, where shall we look? This is six, seven, or eight, so there's no six on this one. One of these has got to have a six on it. Is there something telling us? Can one of these not have a six on it for some reason? If there's a six on this one, there would be a six there. Oh, this is no, this is madness. Um, this one can't have a, that one can't have a six on it. So that one's got to be, that one can't be one, two, and three. I don't think there's a common digit, is there, between... Uh, 
um, the seven. So the seven is one, two, four. The eight is one, three, four. But the nine is one, two, six, which is hopeless. Um, if I was wondering whether I, if I could figure out a common digit, then I might be at least able to lock a digit onto one of these, one of these arrows. Oh, you can put a two on this arrow. Look, ah, yeah, hang on. This this arrow has to have a two on it because we know that this is a one, two, three triple. So there's definitely a two in one of those three squares. So there's not a two in one of those squares. There's not a two in one of those squares. So there is a two on this arrow, which means this square is not eight because the eight arrow is one, three, four. And if that's not eight, that's not eight. And therefore that's not seven. because we know those add up to 15. If that's not seven, this one has to be <laughs> one, two, oh, I still, I don't think it's good enough, is it? Hang on, this was very interesting though. So now, oh no, uh, we've got, yes, I've got the same, same pattern here. I've got one, two, three. Yes, I can't put two in those three squares because the two's definitely in green in box seven. And I can't put two in those squares, so this arrow also has a two on it. Therefore, this arrow is not eight either. Which means that's not eight, which means that's not seven. Which means that's not seven. Now. Well, now this, this arrow's become more potent because I've got to put a three on this arrow. This is either one, two, three, or one, three, four. So there's now a three on this one. Therefore there's a, th ah, ah, now there's no, now there's no three in those two squares by Sudoku. So there's a three in one of those two squares. There's no three on this arrow. So this can't be a six. Oh, this is, Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We might be about to get excited here. There's no three on this arrow. So this arrow is a nine because it can't be one, two, three for a six and it can't be one, three, four for an eight. I think this arrow is a nine, this one, this one right here, which if that's right, that is, that's incredible. But also it might be, oh, hang on, what am I doing? I want that to be the same number. This might be absolutely massive because now we're gonna get all of these, all of the corners. So now we've got one, two, six on that one. One, two, four on this one. One, two, three on this one. One, three, four on this one. And by Sudoku, that's a four because just pairing up the fours here. Um, now we can get rid of some of the corner pencil. Oh, whoopsie. Some of the corner pencil marks now. I think that we'll just tidy this up slightly and have a stare at it. We can One, two, four. So three in that box is in one of two places. It's in one of two places in box one. Six, look, hasn't made an appearance in box nine. So it must be in one of those two cells. Oh, bother, it's there. So six is in one of two positions in box six. Um, two, three. Oh, come on. I feel like we're right on the cusp of cracking the puzzle now. Um, that square can't be a six. Six in box two is locked into one of two places. Seven is in fact locked into one of two places as well. Mm. 
Now what do we do? Um, three, oh, three is in one of two places in box three, according to my pencil marks. So that means that can't be a three. So that's a three. So now in this box, look, we need six, eight, and nine, I think, into those three squares. That can't be nine. Okay, that doesn't seem to be yielding much fruit. Um, eight has, oh, yeah, eight has to be in one of two places, I think, in box six. In fact, yeah, the, the, the way the symmetry works, you can always lock, because of, the, because of this pattern, I think you can always lock the six, seven, eight, and nine into two positions in each of the in each of boxes two, four, six, and eight. So for this one, it's going to be the seven and the nine that get locked into those two squares and these two squares. And for this one, it'll be the eight and the nine that have to be in those squares or these squares. So we've now, I think we've we've extracted the logic such as it is from from that sequence of digits. Um, have we learned any more about that? No, we still still got nothing really on the little killer clues. So it's either Sudoku or what? It must be Sudoku I've got to do. That's a bit daunting. Central box, one, two, four, and five to place. Three. Ah, ah, okay. There's something along row five, therefore. One, two, four, five, quadruple, which I'm not sure if that does anything. Five, if we look at along here, you can see the five will have to go in one of those two squares. So there's no five up there. Oh, in fact, this three is more potent than I realise. That comes out of there. That gives me a one, two, four. That gives me a one, two, four. Oh, in fact, that gets me this digit. I've got a one, two, four triple now in column five. That square must be a six. That gets me a six at the top of the grid. That's no longer a six. Um, four is in one of those two squares because it's not here in the one, two, four triple. So four isn't coming out of these two squares. Oh, it's so close now. Okay, golly, um, that's not six anymore. Which means what exactly? So we've now got we've now got a quintuple in this row of one, two, three, four, five. This is a six or an eight. That finds a friend up above it, look, with a six, eight pair. So this column looks like it's the interesting one. We've now got a 1-2 pair, a 6-8 pair, and a 7-9 pair. So we need 3s, 4s, and 5s, I think, into these squares. Oh, well, where does 4 go? That's a sensible question. It's got to go here. So this is a 3-5 pair now. Slowly, we're whittling away at the options. Um, Nine by Sudoku has got to go there. That's lovely. That gets me a six eight pair in the Oh look, now I've got a six eight pair in this row. That gets me that one. And the moment we get this one, we know that one's an eight. Which doesn't actually seem to do anything, but it's quite exciting. So now we must be able to finish this row, can't we? We need a six. No, we've got a six. We need a nine. That square is a nine by Sudoku. Nine is in one of those two cells. Oh. Um, these two squares are therefore known. They are a five eight pair. And these two squares are known. They've got to be a six seven pair, which means this square must be known to be a five. And now we know those two squares. They're three and seven which means those two squares 
are what? Are they two and six, really? That surprises me. I don't know why I find that surprising, but I do. That's a two six pair. That's a three seven pair. Okay. And I mean, good grief. It's still not, it's not in any way collapsing, is it? How long have I had? Gosh, I've nearly had an hour. That has flown by. Um, this has got to be a five or a seven, I think. I don't know what I just did then, but it's five or a seven by Sudoku because these three squares are a five, seven, eight triple uh, in the row and that one can't be an eight. So there's a little bit of restriction on this square. I suppose I'd better fill in this one as well. Um, so probably it's going to have to be these other little killers that I've not looked at yet, but they still don't look appetizing at all, do they? There's still a lot of, I mean, we've not even pencil marked these squares yet. So let's just have a stare at this for a bit longer and see if we can at least improve the odds. May the odds ever be in our favor. Um, I don't know. I'm really not seeing I'm really not seeing very much at all. Let's check this row again. We've got a quintuple there, so we need six, sevens, eights, and nines. This square, I'm not seeing any restriction on that at all. Um, this one, that's seven or nine, actually, that's better. This one, six, seven, or eight. No, <laughs> oh no, I'm getting stuck. Um, maybe, maybe this column. We need five, sevens, eights, and nines. So five, eight, and nine. Five or seven here, whoopsie. That one, oh good grief, that seems to have a multitude of possibilities. So, <laughs> okay, what do we do now? We must weep. Um, no, we're not going to weep. We're going to somehow find a way through this. Because this puzzle needs to be seen. Now, where do we look? Maybe this diagonal? So I think what I'm going to have to do is look at the options for each of these squares. So this square cannot be one, two, or three. It could, I think, be four and five. It can't be six, seven, or eight. So four, oh, that comes down to four, five, or nine. That's better than I thought. Because actually these triples do work, don't they? They two, five, it can't be six, seven, or eight. That's just two, five, or nine. Okay, now this one, one can't be obscenely large. It's got to be two, five, six, or seven, maybe. Is that right? Don't know. Um, I can't see how to improve that any further. And so this one is the worst one. Um, so what do we know therefore about this diagonal? We've only got a six on it so far. Uh, Trying to think about the minimum values. You can't put one in both of those squares, actually. That's interesting. So although in theory you could try to put one in both of those squares, you'd rule one out of the central box if you did that. So the minimum value of those squares would be a one and a two. So that's nine altogether. And then you're looking for another 17 from these squares. Uh, which... is incredibly possible. Oh dear. <laughs> oh no. Right, we're going to abandon this one and we're going to look at this one instead. So let us take a look at this one. This square therefore needs to be, ah, oh, this one's better look because there's a one, two, three, five quintuple in this box. So this can only be eight or nine, I think. Wow, okay, that square is much more restricted than I'd realized. This square is three, four, 
five or eight, really? Oh dear, dear, dear. That's a disaster. I can't see how to limit this by more, but it, oh, it can't be eight actually, look, because there is an eight in its row. So that's just three, four or five. Can't be six, can't be seven, can't be eight, can't be nine. Okay, yeah, that does seem reasonable. Um, now this square sees, it could be three, I think. It's quite difficult to keep track of all of these weird sort of triples in the in the corners. Three, can't be four, I think it can be five. Can't be six, can be seven, can't be eight can be nine three five seven or nine. Oh dear right so let's let's look at this then we've got a six on it we need 25 from the other digits so if we were to have if we were to have a three here for example does that break for any reason that would give us nine here we'd need 22 from these squares we could have double five eight and four that would work if we went nine here we'd have 15 we'd need 16 more we could oh, we can do it easily nine one double three uh okay there must be something else jeepers creepers i do not know i've, I've almost fully pencil marked this grid as well I really hope it's not just staring me in the face because that will be irritating for you and for me if I eventually discover what it is. We can. I mean, what have I not used though? I've used almost everything. Can I resolve this 2-3 diagonal? That's the only part of the central cross I've not resolved. So, if that's 2, that's 2. That's two. And that's two. Which looks absolutely fine. Uh, that's two. That's two. That's two. That's two. That just looks symmetrical to me. Just double check that if that's so if this is two, that's two. If th oh, right, there's a small weirdity. There is a small weird weirdity here, I think, which is that two is always in one position. As it so in one of two positions in column one and one of two positions in row one because whichever one of these we pick for we know we know the two is in one of those two squares because this is a two three pair across the across the grid now if that's a two look that has to be a two but if this is a two this is a two so it's a, it's, I don't know what, what the correct way to describe the pattern is, but you always end up with a two in one of those two positions, whatever you choose, and you always end up with a two in one of those two positions, whatever you choose. So that square is not a two, and that square is not a two. Which means that, no, it's not going to do anything. So over here, that means there's a two in one of those two squares now. So in this in this box, two has been restricted now, I think, to one of two places. But that accords nicely with what's going on there, look. And down here, two has to be in one of those two places. Dive bombed by a low-flying aeroplane. Two has got to be in one of those places. And, ah, no, this is better. The two down here sees that square that's got to be a six so that's a two um 
That's not a two anymore. Six is six is fixing the six and the seven. The seven is coming out of some squares, look, along here, which might be interesting. Seven has to be in one of those two cells in box eight. So that definitely feels like it, well, it gave me digits, which is fantastic. Um, but has it done more than that? We've now got to, we've now somehow got to whittle these down further. So seven came out of here, but seven actually is not the most useful digits come out of here. I, I need to get rid of them, a high or a low digit, I feel. Um, now, what came out of here? Two came out of that one. Did that rule out anything? So this one needed 20, doesn't it? It needs 20 into those five cells. Those have got to be a one, two minimum. So that's three, so 17. Ah, you might be able to get rid of nine from that square now, I think. What about that one? Can that be nine? Oh, I'm not sure. Let's have a look at this one though. If that's nine, how do I keep this down? Because now I've got to make those four squares add up to 11. Now the minimum those two can add up to is three because otherwise I'll rule one out of the central cross. So that's three there. So that means these two squares have to add up to no more than eight, but the only options are five and four, which add up to nine. That is not a nine, um, which might give me, it uh, looks like it's gonna give me another digit. Look, so I can get, whoopsie, I can get rid of nine from this square. And nine must go in this square, if I trust my pencil marks, and why wouldn't I? That gives me a nine here on the 31 diagonal. Ah, now we might be away again. Um, Let me just double check this nine as well while I'm over here though. So if that's a nine, we've got 15 here. The minimum for these two is three, that's 18. I need these two to add up to eight. Oh no, that can be a two. That's why it's so annoying. That's, this two possibility here is so annoying because it allows this to be a six and that would work. So you can't rule out nine from this square. Nine in, actually nine in that box is locked into one of two places. Oh, bobbins. Right, okay. So we've got to... I don't know what we've got to do. But if that's nine, can you ever not make those one and two? If you try and make those one and four, you'd have 15, 20. You'd need six. That doesn't work. So if this is nine, this is a one, two pair. Does that cause anything to break? Don't see it. Uh, right, okay, so, but it, I think I got a nine on this one, so there might be more we can do over here now. I tell you what, this is a very, very hard finish though, isn't it? We've got 15, we need 16 more from these squares. That has the possibility to be nine. Oh, Bother, bother, bother. That can be nine if that's a one and that's a double three. Right. So. So there's, it's just possible for this to be a nine on this diagonal literally only just it would get if this was nine it would give us lots and lots of joy immediately ah uh, yeah okay so there is a relationship here look at column eight the nine has to be on one of these diagonals in fact it has to be in one of those squares 
Let's get rid of the colouring for the central square now. There must be a 9 in one of those squares, otherwise there's no 9 in column 6. So, so one of these diagonals is very heavily constrained. 15, this would have to be 11, that has to be 9, 1, 2. The one here, this would have to add up to 8. If this is 9, 50, 18, 24, you have to make those three add up to 7. Ah, yeah, okay. I can see how to force this. Um, it's tricky, but that square can't be a 5. If that's a 5, you, you can't put 9 here anymore because you've lost too many degrees of freedom. Uh, just to show you, those three squares would add up to 20. So these three squares would have to add up to six, where you can see that's immediately impossible. Um, so if that's five, you can't put nine here. But if this is five, where does five go in box um, four over here? It's got to go on this diagonal. And now you can't put nine here either, because the only way this worked was with one double three, not five. Let's just double check the maths. If this is five, you'd have 29 in those three squares. So these two squares would have to add up to two. That will not work. So this is a two. That is a hard earned digit indeed. And it's probably not going to do anything. Um, it's going to be a one, four pair. That means that square is a three. Ah, that three is actually useful. That three gives me this square as a five. That gives me that square as a three on this diagonal. So it probably is this one that's a nine. Um, this square must be an eight, just by our old friend Sudoku making a reappearance. Eight must be in one of these two squares. This square's got to be five, six, or seven. It can't be six, so it's five or seven. Now we've got some joy going along this row, have we? This square's got to be five. Ah, this is six or seven. Oh, no, it doesn't. Uh, eight, seven. Oh, bother. Um... Okay. <laughs> so what did we actually get from that? Is it just this three that we've learned from? I'm not sure it's more than that. It might be, but I, I feel like it's probably these digits now adding up to 18, which means I need 13 from those squares. So is there some way of ruling out some stuff here? Um, this can't be three anymore, can it? If that's a three, you can't make those squares add up to enough. So that is not three. So this is now five or nine. Um, which is... I'm sure, extremely important. <laughs> I just don't know how it's important. We can. Hang on. 18. I need 13 more. If that's a 1, I need 12. I can do that very easily. If it's a 2, I need 11. Ah, 11 is harder. 11 looks like it's impossible, so I don't think that can be 2 anymore. That gives me a 2 here, look. And a 1, 4 here. Let me just double check this, because this is so important. If, if this is 18 and this was 2, that would be 20. I'd need these two to add up to 11. I cannot see that being possible. That's definitely can't make this a six. You definitely can't make this a two. This is good. Right. So two here gives us the one four pair here. Gives us a two five pair here. The one four pair here gives me a two up there. That's on this, this other diagonal. But probably not in a useful way. The other digit I didn't check here was 4, wasn't it? So let me double check that. That would be 22. I'd need 9 
five and four would work. Oh, bother. So I think I think this can't be a five. So what I think I'm learning from that. Because if this is a five, you need to make these add up to eight. And that's impossible. Okay, I'm happy with that. So this has become three or four. It's still it's still not giving up. It really isn't. I can get rid of fours from there. I can get rid of fives from here. I got a two on this one, didn't I? So now what have I got? I've now got 10 on this one. I need 16 more. Can that be four anymore? No, that definitely can't be four. I'm not even sure it can be five. Hopefully it can't be. Let's double check. If that's a five, we need 15. We need, oh, I can. I don't believe it. Ah, oh, I've got a five nine pair in this column out of nowhere. That's gorgeous. That means that squares a seven. That means that squares a seven, I think. This square has become two. That's a five. Oh, please carry on going. One, two go in. Three and one go in. That's a four. Ah, that's a three. That's that's on that diagonal. So that's probably important. Five, eight, nine in the bottom row of the grid. Five, eight, ah, five, eight, nine in the bottom row sees that square. That's a one. That's a five. So this is a five by the power of Sudoku. This is a three, two, one, two, one, two, three, one. All the greens are now done I think and it's getting exciting come on <laughs> we can so now what have I got this diagonal again I've now got 21 I need 10 more I can do it I can do it at last the only way of making this add up to 10 is with a 1 here and a 9 here which means that's a 5 that's an 8 8 and 5 go in that's a nine, I think. That's an eight, look. Ah, eight, five. Now, this one has given us a four. That's given us a four and a one, and a four and a one. So this, di let's just double check what this diagonal is now yielding. So now we've got 13 and six, 19, this should be a seven, lovely. Seven and six, that's gets a six and an eight. And oh, I did not want to do that. I just wanted to put the six in there, I think. And that's a seven and it looks like we've cracked it. Maybe, I've just got to fill that digit in with a four. I finished. Yes, I did finish. <laughs> What a puzzle that is. That is one of the great Sudokus. A Spartacus take a bow. The logic um, around this Catherine wheel and the way that you could whittle down the options is, I've, I mean, it's just beautiful. There's beautiful deduction on beautiful deduction. It just, it's stunning, absolutely stunning. What I found really hard, and I'm sure I've missed something, is how to do the last bit with the there's probably something I could do to whittle these 26 and 31 down a bit more cleanly because I felt like I just kept having to bounce back and forward over and over again to whittle down little cells. But it's a stunning puzzle, honestly, absolutely stunning. Let me know how you got on. I think I got my comeuppance for my 16 minute video yesterday. This one is over an hour longer, but it was extremely enjoyable and I will remember that puzzle. That, that was brilliant. Thanks so much for watching and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.